Hi there, welcome to My Made Up. My name is Alex, and today we are talking about those makeup products that you've been neglecting or that you really don't like. <laughs> a lot of us like to experiment with new makeup rather than sticking with our tried and trues. And what does that result in? Disappointment, often products that kind of just get cast aside, things that never get used up, and at the end of the day, that's just wasted money and wasted product, which is a very unfortunate thing. I did a big declutter of my makeup collection earlier this year. I don't have a huge collection, but even for me, it really emphasized like, hey, you're not using everything that you have. And I really took note of things that I've been neglecting. Getting rid of all the expired makeup, there was certainly a lot left over that just wasn't really touched and I, I didn't know why. Uh, some of it was just simply neglected. Some of it was stuff that I used a couple times and said I don't really like it. But I don't think that because you don't like the first impression of something that that's just... I just don't think you should just give up after that. So I'm showing you the products that I've been neglecting. I determined to pan all of them. I've put them on my desk so that I see them every single day and then I have to use them. They're the only makeup I have available to me at this time. So I'm going to show you my tips and tricks for using up foundations and concealers that you don't really like. Some of the things I neglected that are pretty decent products for face. Um, also eyebrows. I have two eyebrow products that both don't match me and I think that it works pretty well. With a few little tweaks, so they work pretty well. I think you can make most things work. I'm going to show you that today. Keep on watching. Hit the subscribe button if you uh, want to see more of me. And if you don't, that's okay too. But let's get into it. Okay, we're gonna get started with primer. This is the Cover FX Blurring Primer. I have, so, I have so much of this left, but primer is just not my thing. I've been trying to figure out what to do with it. I've even been trying to mix it into foundation, but I just don't really like the way it makes my skin feel. So if you have any suggestions, please leave me a comment below. My only thoughts on primer is that if you don't like the primer you have, and the exception here is like, I say try to use up the stuff you have unless it's horribly making you break out. That's the exception to the rule. Like you can unfortunately give it to somebody else or I guess you're gonna have to toss it if it can't be returned because I don't think you should sacrifice the health of your skin to use up a product. But everything else, I think that sometimes we give up on things too early, so I think it's good to experiment and try to see what you can do with a product that you might not have been liking too much. So for primer, I think that if you don't like it on your face and it's safe to do so, I would say like try it on your eyes, maybe try it on your under eyes. This one in particular, I've tried to mix it into foundation and I'm still playing around with it so I don't have a good recommendation for it, but <laughs> I do have some recommendations for the base products, which this is sad to say, but true. I bought this last February, technically. It's like on the edge of being expired. This is the LYS foundation, triple fix serum foundation. So many people rave about this, love this. I like every single thing about this brand. And I think this is a really good color match for me too, but the way this sits on my skin is just, it's just not right. But I'm gonna show you what I do. See, the problem with this for me is it's, it seems to really, emphasize any texture I have on my face. So if you find that you have a foundation that's a little bit too oily for you, I think you can either, <laughs> this is a trick that I tried the other day, add some translucent powder to it, which is iffy. It definitely makes it more full coverage looking, but when I saw the way it was sitting on my face, I didn't like it and I took it off, but I still need to experiment with that more. Um, but so the key for this to me is that I work from home. So it doesn't really, I don't see a lot of people. So sometimes I just go full on and put it all over my face and not worry too much about it. Cause it's not like it's terrible. It's just not like the best my skin could look with foundation on. And I think with your foundation, you gotta really give it a couple goes. See if it's the brush that makes a difference. Like if you put it on a, with a brush versus a spon sponge, it can be a completely different experience. So try that first. Um, I have I have this one from Revlon that I thought was gonna be like a little cute light wage kind of glossier moment, but it's it just emphasizes my pores like no other. 
and it comes across very dry. And a simple solution for this is I just add a little drop of oil to it. I added these e.l.f. Uh, nourishing facial oil drops. Solves the problem. So if you have something that's too matte or dry, that's such an easy fix. I think the reverse is more difficult when you have something that's like a serum foundation. For me in particular, that doesn't really sit well. It's harder to uh, figure that one out. But so what I like to do with this one, if I'm trying, is I will put it on most of my face and my cheeks and I'm just going to avoid the areas that are too porous and where it tends to emphasize texture, which is on my nose, my chin, and like I have very large pores right here. But if I keep it to the skin here, and my forehead's, my forehead <laughs> is not great, but like I don't mind it there too much. So this is how I'm currently trying to use this one up. And I like to put it on with a brush because it gives a bit more coverage. The sponge just tends to make it a little bit too dewy for my liking. Like when I put it over here, it's a very good foundation, a really nice color match for me. But anytime it's on anything textured, um, it just doesn't do very well for me. So that's how I am currently using this up. I'm just trying to avoid taking it too far into the middle center of my face. And it just sometimes, I don't know about you, but it just pains me so much to have products that don't work for me. Um, just because sometimes there's things that just looks re really great on other people and you just really wish they would work for you, but they don't. So the Kosas Revealer Concealer, I actually think it's a really good concealer if you like something kind of very emollient, dewy, lightweight. The problem with this one is I got a shade too dark when I first purchased it. I did get a second one, which was lighter shade, which I think worked quite well. But also it's, there's a really weird spot over there. <laughs> we'll ignore him. Um, but also it's just, it doesn't cover acne very well. So I think it's more of like a concealer that I like to use all over the face. And I think this is a, actually a really good concealer for using as foundation. It just depends on like the shade match that I want that day. This one is the Bare Minerals Bare Skin Complete Serum. See, you'll notice the trend here, like anything that's too emollient or serum-like, I don't particularly like because the intention with this one was to be good under the eyes and it just doesn't really, it's just like too moist to stay under there for me. So what I've been doing with these two I will wear this as a full foundation. I also used this as a full foundation the other day, and I actually thought it didn't look as dark as I thought it would. Um, as long as I just bring like bronzer down my neck, I feel like it looks okay. But for the sake of this, sometimes you just gotta power through concealers that you don't like. Um, and I think it's really easy to use them as base makeup. It's pretty much my biggest recommendation. If it's too dewy, use it as base makeup. And if it's too dry, obviously you can try to experiment and mix a little bit of oil in with it. But I'm gonna put this on the areas where I didn't put any foundation. And we'll see how it goes. Another, another bad thing about this one is that the stopper, I don't know, there's something about this where it likes to produce oil around the edge and the product really likes to come out there, which gets very frustrating. Like you don't want to have gross concealer all over your makeup, you know? Y yeah. So that's another issue with that one, why I have uh, been neglecting it because truly I'm just mad at it. I'm just annoyed with it. Like, please don't get all over my other makeup. That's all I'm asking of you. I'm also trying to use a brush more and I have to admit like I hate, <laughs> I hate it, I can't. Like it just, for me, it makes everything so much harder to blend. But I think it's a good thing to try to get away from sponges because I also think that they're just a bit harder to clean and I don't know how well they can be recycled. So that's like for the environment, it's like, hey, let me try to start using brushes because that's one area where I could clean things up a little bit. And my favorite concealer of last year, and i um, been using it quite a bit, the Revlon Photo Ready Candid Concealer. 
I like this one because I think it's a good color match for me and it also dries down which makes it harder to blend if you leave it on too long but if you're someone who has oily skin or who has acne it's kind of nice to have a product that dries down because it just makes it more long wearing you know but since I don't have anything really bright I'm just gonna add a little bit of this in just to give some brightness in the under eye area how do we feel about the under eye area? Um, I've always been someone who, you know, when I was younger, I really tried to hide my dark circles because I they're kind of prominent just because I'm so pale and they end up looking very purple. But I feel like it's a trend almost nowadays for younger kids to embrace them. It's like the, I want to call it, I'll coin it like the I'm dead inside kind of look. It's like the... I'm kind of moody, maybe I'm depressed. Not that it's fun to joke about depression, but hey, a lot of us go through that stuff. So sometimes there's, it's nice to be able to have a sense of humor about mental health stuff if you suffer from mental health stuff. So I kind of feel like it's that look and I'm like, maybe I should, like I haven't cared too much about covering my circles that much lately because it's just so much effort to try to like, like who cares, you know? But I'm wondering if, you feel that way too, like you see people who really embrace under eye darkness and like do you, does that make you want to kind of like go a little lighter on your concealer? Let me know. Moving on to the powder products, I have two here. This is a Physician's Formula Translucent Mineral Face Powder. This is actually something that I've used a lot over the years. The issue with Physicians Formula is they kind of really change their brand attitude where it's not really meant for people with sensitive skin anymore. It's more like um, they're trying to be more cutesy and trendy. Another problem with Physicians Formula is they don't really have a good shade range at all. I remember when I used to go in the store, I think they've kind of expanded with their liquid foundations, but I remember going in the store and like they had like <laughs> maybe two or three shades of this powder. There wasn't one light enough, and there certainly weren't any that were dark enough for a whole range of skin tones. So that's the thing I struggle with with them is like if I pick a light powder, it's just orangey and too dark. But um, like I said, if I bring it down the neck, it's okay. I think I went back to this one. Um, this is probably like two years old, but I think I went back to it because it has SPF in it and it's talc free. Um, and I used to wear this a lot as like just a foundation or if I really wanted to cover up acne. So yeah, if you have a powder that's too dark, just bring it down your neck. Pretty simple. Then I also bought this one from them. I don't know how I thought this would be cool. This is so gimmicky. It's the Physician's Formula Mineral Wear. This has sat in my collection forever because it's just so frustrating to use. Like you have three little sections and like, I already broke the tab off the pink one. First of all, the powder is not very good to begin with. Um, the pink and the yellow, I don't know. But it's just so messy and irritating. But you know what? I bought it. So I'm going to try to use it. Sometimes you just got to deal with a little bit of mess when it comes to makeup. And uh, it's my fault. So taking the translucent light powder under my eyes and onto my lid. I find a great way to use a powder you don't like is to put it on your eyelids. Because if it's a little bit too dark, it can also help create a base for your eyeshadow. So I'm gonna put it on the areas that are very porous a little bit more and just a dab of my Kabuki brush here I don't know if anybody still uses these, but I don't I don't mind them. And just set the whole face. That's a very unusual looking spider. It's very chunky, but small. Not don't worry, it's not massive. I just haven't seen one like that in a while. Okay. Back to the physician's formula powder. Sometimes if I just want extra coverage on a spot, I'll just take a little bit of it and just press it on. It's not too pigmented, but 
it gives me enough, you know? Or you can definitely take it on your eyelids as well. I actually like the bronzer I have right now, so I'm not gonna hate on it. But if you have a bronzer, I think most of the time, the reason why you might not like it is probably because it's too dark or too orange. And in that case, you can either use it with a light hand or go in with it as an eyeshadow, which is a pretty simple way to get rid of it. The next product that I've really been neglecting for the past, I don't know how many years, this is so old, but I did clean it with some alcohol. I panned all the bronzer um, and I've got a little bit of highlight left. And I think the thing about this Hourglass palette was it really didn't do the things for me that I wanted it to do. I think this came out around the time of maybe like 2017 is maybe when I bought it. Um, and I think the style of makeup back then was a little bit more full and the powders were just a little bit too, I don't know, glowy and didn't like give me enough of a mattifying effect for my skin type. But now that makeup is so lightweight and kind of like fresh and clean looking is a trend. I think that this is definitely more wearable now and something that I enjoy more. The only thing is Hourglass, they don't have a good shade range, so I definitely wouldn't recommend buying a lot of their products now, especially because they're just incredibly overpriced. Um, so I haven't been purchasing anything from Hourglass, but this was such an expensive buy that when I looked back to my collection and realized that there was only one thing I ever really used up. I was like, I need to go back and finish this because I just, I wanna get my money's worth. So what I've been doing lately is I mix the two blush shades together and they don't have a lot of payoff. So just checking on that spider. <laughs> they don't have a lot of payoff. So I can go quite heavy and I just take it up. And then I go into the highlighter shade. Just put a bit on the cheekbones. See, a very, very stark highlight was popular at the time. And I didn't always follow that, but I did, cause like you can tell that I, I have panned it quite a bit. So I was using it cause I didn't follow all the makeup trends back then anyway. Apologies, the card was full. So I think I left off talking about how makeup was very full on back in that time. So, I didn't use this as much as I could have, but I've actually really been enjoying this palette. I think it just looks great for everyday makeup. So I just put some in the corner of my eyes, and I do a little bit down the nose as a slight nose contour, and some on the tip. So another product that I just got recently, um, I did a little thing with the skin store, and I got to pick out some products. I got this Vapor Beauty brow pencil in the shade Storm, which they didn't have very many options. They're a clean beauty brand and you'll tend to see that with clean beauty brands. A lot of times they don't have very many shade options or their products tend to be a little bit more emollient. So if I put this pencil full on, it just looks way too dark. But what I've discovered is if I take an angle brush, get some of the product on there. I'll brush my brows down, do my normal routine of if I was putting on the pencil. And it's just such an easier way to still use the product up, but it lets you do it with much lighter hand. So you might just have a pencil that looks, you think is just way too dark, but try it this way and you'll see if it can still work for you. Cause I'm really trying to pan everything I have or use it up rather than buying a lot of new things and then <laughs> never finishing one product. And what I like about this method too is when you get to the inner, cor inner corner of your eye in the very innermost part of your brow, you can kind of just flick up and fl fill in the whole thing at once. Just gives it like a nice shading without it being too harsh. So that's how I use a pencil that I don't really like as much as others, just because of the shade. And then I found this Nude by Nature brow gel that I've been neglecting so hard. I bought this a couple years ago 
and I bought it in blonde when I was blonde and going through the process of growing up my gray hair but it just wasn't like ashy enough I was expecting it to be more of a taupe but it is more so for blondes and my eyebrows just aren't that light but <laughs> I find that if I use it in combination with this darker shade of brow gel and I don't use it in a way where it would be the only product I use that it works quite well and it has a lot of hold this is actually the only bra product I have right now in terms of a gel I used up all the Anastasia um, brow freeze because it did freeze <laughs> in the van like it ended up just getting too hard and dry so I couldn't use it anymore, but I did make a large dent in it before that happened. So I was like, you know what? I think I have to toss this. I'll finish up this brow gel. I put it in my project pan pile and uh, we'll, see where, we'll see where we go from there. Like what brow gel do we choose next? There are a lot of options on the market. So I'll just take it, brush through it again. doesn't have as much hold as brow freeze but that's okay but I feel like my brows have just kind of like unfluffed themselves I'll just actually use my pinky finger and just fluff them back up throughout the day this one was like don't neglect this use it don't neglect it don't let it become part of the neglected pile Ooh, I'll show you the palette I pulled out to pan <laughs> this might be surprising to some people I got the soft glam palette. I don't, I do not use this palette. I don't know why there's something about it, but I just, there's nothing wrong with it at all. And it should be like the ideal palette, but I just don't like it that much for myself for whatever reason. I never reach for it. And I just don't actually really reach for eyeshadow palettes at all anymore. Um, so I'll show you how I've been using it when I don't feel like wearing makeup. I actually, my favorite look of the month has been faux freckles. Um, so I go into the shade Rustic, and if you look at it, it looks like, um, it's a little bit warm, but it looks a little bit more cool tone in the pan. So you might think you need to use a different shade, but this is actually my favorite shade to use for the freckles, because it does pour, pull pretty warm, and I just use the same angle brush I use for everything else. And you can actually just use the tip and just dot, and you just ever so slightly tap it off. I feel like this is the best, most natural looking freckles that I've tried. It's definitely better than using a brow pencil or a brow pen in my opinion, because it just blends in the skin so nicely. And this is what I've been doing when I want to use this palette, but I don't really feel like doing a full on eyeshadow look. Um, I'll take like a little bit of setting spray too and just spray a, a tiny corner of it and I'm just gonna make a little bit of liner just on the back of my hand so I just go in for the very outer edge and just do like ever so slight line it just gives you a very subtle lift so I'm going to put that away. Um, two other things that I've found that I've been neglecting. Seriously, I found this hourglass. Do you remember when these were all the rage? The hourglass reflex? Or wait, the hourglass scattered light. This one is in reflect. And this is when all those Stila glitters were so popular. This is Tarte's Rainforest of the Sea one that they came out with. Which I really have to scrape around. But I think this is a really great one. If you're looking for a clean version of these, um, which is very pretty. But because we talked about Hourglass and how expensive they are, I've been using it lately because I paid a lot of money for this and I don't use it. And it's actually a very good, pretty product. So, And it gives you kind of like a special look to your makeup without being so dramatic like it's not like I can't wear this out during the day and I just press it up towards the brow bone 
just to give myself a little bit of a lift because I have a hooded eye. It's just good, in my opinion, to keep things in sight so you know what you have and you are more likely to grab them and actually use them. Mascara, something I've been intentionally neglecting, is this CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean. I actually do like this product. The only problem is that I accidentally bought the waterproof one and it's impossible to get off your lashes. So if you have a waterproof mascara that you hate and it's like the similar like obviously use it in this scenario when you need a waterproof mascara but what i've been doing is actually just using it on the bottom lashes because to me like the bottom lashes are more prone to needing a waterproof mascara anyway and where i live we still have a mask mandate so and it's the winter time the more likely place that you will have any kind of smudging or running would be the bottom lash line just because of like a lot of masks they'll like <laughs> your own air will come kind of like blow up underneath your eyes right like there's not such a, enough of a seal where that's not going to happen it's like how people's glasses fog so if anything that kind of steam I guess you would call it or humidity there is going to be the most likely thing to give you any mascara running down here so if you have a if you have a waterproof mascara that you just can't stand to use try it on your bottom lashes on the top I use my Wander Beauty Mile High Club Last but not least, we have the lips. I actually brought out all my lip products in this container because I just didn't want to neglect any. Um, just to remind myself what I do have. And these Bite Beauty lipsticks have been something I've definitely neglected. Um, the Power Move Creamy Matte lip products. These are cool because they also have a little sharpener in the bottom too. And it's easy to apply them because they're such a small little stick. So it also... It almost doubles as like a lip liner, but I'm going to go for that kind of matte look today because I'm going to the grocery store, which means I still have to wear a mask and I just don't want to do anything too bright or glossy. Do a little bit of that 90s lip with the cool toned pencil. This is kind of like a my lip but like warmer which i think goes with the kind of bronzy freckle look i did and i also will use these two powders on my face sometimes if i just want to smooth uh some things out sometimes i'll just use the lighter one under my eyes or i'll mix them both together um i'm just gonna do that in the pores area and if i find my brows are kind of falling already sometimes i'll just take up your brush and just pull them back up a bit and there we go oh, I don't know do you think it's annoying that I have all my makeup on my desk it's probably not the best setup for some people but I found that since I do have a window close by I ended up bringing my makeup bag out here anyway and I would just have so much of a mess all over my desk with makeup so I thought why not just commit to it and put my makeup right on my desk so like once I come to my desk in the morning I can just sit here in the ni in nice natural daylight. The way my desk is set up in my bedroom is not ideal for putting on makeup, so that's what I decided to do. I like it, it's working out for me. And having like a pared down version of my collection, it's just like helping me really make sure that I am using the products that I set out to use this month. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I want you to remember, don't just make up your face, make up your mind too. And I will see you next time, bye-bye.